this is really exciting for us because I think this is one of the first times, if not the first time, TDY has had a chance to sit down with three women in music at once Woo. and sort of talk about the landscape of the industry and their work and their stories, um, which are just so important because they're three young women, young voices, and they're going to be the next, you know, big thing. So uh, please give a very warm, warm, warm welcome to Gail, Mimi Webb, and Tate McRae. How are you guys? Good. Well. Good. You all look fabulous. Thank you. We get microphones and everything. I know. This is so professional. There's cameras, there's lights. What more could you want? This might as well be the Ellen show, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, just, we look just like the fan suits. Um, so, you guys, how's Philly treating you? Pretty great. Yeah. It's cool. Did you just pop in? Yeah, really Did you just get here, or have you yeah. been here for a minute? Oh, we go in this morning, didn't we? Like, yeah. Whatever, yeah I, I got in last night because we, we had to do the good old drive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's tiring. I mean, no, it's like a two hour drive because we went to DC. We were in DC and then we all went to Philly. So okay. Yeah. yeah. Not bad. Well, welcome. You'll definitely have to get a cheesesteak if oh, you okay. haven't, right, guys? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. What, are, what are your favorite spots they should go to? Oh, I said gyms. <laughs> Joseph. Yeah, I'll spend the Gino's. I'm going to do those and Pat's. And Pat's. So you've got your bases covered. Have yes. you two have had uh, cheesesteaks yet? No. Oh, you <laughs> have to do that tonight. No, you is across the street from TLA, which is where you guys are tonight. Yes. We so that. pop over. Well, we should get cheesesteaks after the show. We should. Yeah. Let's do you it. should. Wow. So, uh, Let's let everybody know where you'll be, too. We're going to be there at 12. <laughs> Autograph signing, pictures. No. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to be here I was just telling everyone how exciting it is to have three young women in the music industry who are just so on the rise and telling really important stories with your music so let's take it back a little bit before you got here uh, on this stage in this present moment when you were young I feel like um, I know I and Tate you have some dance ties that was my music tie when I was a kid but obviously I did not go on and pick up a guitar start singing lessons and go on to be you know have a whole music career so when or how did you know you wanted to turn sort of a, a musical hobby into a career? Was there a moment? Mm, I, I feel like there's always that spark. That's, there's always something that sparks it. If it is like dancing or you, you start playing a guitar or an instrument. Um, a queen of guitar, right? <laughs> <laughs> she um, shreds. Yeah. <laughs> a queen of dancing as well. Oh, my gosh. I can't what do I do? <laughs> But it is like, yeah, there's definitely that thing where there's something that sparks it and then from there it just grows. And I think being songwriters as well, it's, that was also something that would have really helped as well just by sparking that creativity inside. And I think at a young age as well, when you're going through school and you're going through so much, mm -hmm. being able to write music and go and do what you want to do is just amazing. You know, not many people get to do what we do, oh no! So and people have so many dreams too to do that. So I think it's incredible that you, uh, you know, are here. Did, were you gonna say something, Tate? Yeah, I mean, I I thought I was gonna be a dancer when I grew up. I thought I was, you know, just gonna be a backup dancer for an artist. Um, and then I think, like Mimi said, it's it's sometimes just like going through growing up and getting older. Like writing is such an outlet that I think. You know, I feel so grateful that I'm able to do because sometimes I have a hard time putting things into words, so I go to music. Um, and so it's really cool when you're able to, like, even perform shows and see that you're affecting people, you know, in the ways that you were affected as a kid. Um, and so I think it's it's very, very special. I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful. I do want to... Uh, I mean, I was just going to say, I feel like there's a moment where something as a hobby turns into a career, at least when you really know that you want to do it because doing music is not always like an easy thing especially when you first start doing it and like people can make fun of you for it and maybe your family doesn't completely understand it and it's not necessarily an easy thing and if it's just a hobby it's not always worth fighting for of like this is what I want to do but when so many roadblocks are put into you and so many difficulties can like happen that's when you're like no like I actually really want to do this. I don't care if people think I'm weird for doing it. I don't care if people don't completely understand me because this is something I really want to do. And I feel like that's always like 
a turning point that you have and you're like, no, I, I want to do this because it's not easy and I still want to do it anyways. Yeah, that's a good point you make too. Because there had to have been a, a moment where, you know, your parents are, you know, taking you to dance classes or singing lessons and getting you that guitar and they're just like, oh, whatever. Like, you know, like, yeah. she's just having fun. So how was that conversation or with with your parents? Were they like, oh, totally, let's go for it? Were they scared? Like, I told my parents I was going to the radio and they were like, oh, what? Um, <laughs> that's a job. Um, so how did your parents respond? Were they supportive? Were they wary? Yeah, um, for me, yeah, my parents were very supportive. I think from an early age, I went to music school after I finished early on. So then they were really like, oh, yeah, okay, this is going to work. But I think my mum definitely thought it was just something every, like, little girl did. Like, they just, everyone wanted to be, like, a, like a singer, like. But, yeah, I think they were really supportive <laughs> and just so understanding. But, like, I think also being in this social media generation where everything is driven also on social media, TikTok, there's all these different things. So I think it was also seeing how that there's a different way of becoming an artist now, of being, you know, getting into the industry. And I think that's something probably all our parents had to also... <clears throat> all our parents had to also learn and understand because it's something they never really I'm just you know they never went through when they were young like the social media world so yeah I think that you know all I know is that definitely they love I'm sure they just love it and like being able to come to the show just getting the nice little treatment in the corner in the balcony like watching their children like just living it up <laughs> yeah it was interesting when I when I first started like writing songs my parents were so confused because <laughs> You know, I would like come home from dance, and the first ever song I like wrote, I posted on YouTube. Um, and my dad was literally sitting next to me in the next room, and he was like, "Please don't post that." <laughs> I was like, Why? Um, and it was because I was writing about like you know young love, and I think that's like such a foreign topic um, for people, especially since I was literally just putting it out on the internet, and you know it was like basically my diary, um, which is a very scary thing even for parents. Um, Especially because we had no idea how I was going to react. And then it honestly wasn't until they started hearing me like on the radio that uh, was the first time they were like, wow, this is like real. Um, <laughs> no, and it was, it was really interesting because every single writing session I would come out and be like, oh, I wrote this, wrote this song. And they'd be like, you're still writing with that boy again? Like, it was very, it's a very weird career because it doesn't, it doesn't seem legit when you're doing it because it's, it's such a, a passion and a hobby. It doesn't feel like a real job all the time. Um, but, you know, obviously now they're so supportive. Definitely. Amazing. My, my mom's a single mom, so it was, it was just us, and I was just like, I, I, when I was seven, my mom showed me a video of Aretha Franklin, and I was like, that's it, that's what I'm doing with my life, that's what I'm going to do. And I just really, like, stuck to it. I think by the time I was 10, she knew. I'm also very stubborn, and I got that from her, and then she saw it in me. She was like, yeah, she's probably not going to change her mind. And especially because, like, cousins and all of those weren't necessarily the most supportive and especially like Aretha Franklin, like that's what she wanted to do. And I was like, yup. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, oh, that's my kid. <laughs> well, that's awesome to push past that because I think the fear in it is also judgment, right? Like what are people gonna think? And so I think it's tremendous that you were just able to be like, no, this is who I am and this is what I'm doing. Um, my brother thought it was stupid, though. <laughs> oh, God, he could not stand my music. Oh, he think he's What does he think now? now? I, I remember I played him ABC, and that was, like, the first song he ever liked, ever. He was like, I like it. And I was like, wait, what'd you say? What was that? Like, say it again. Does that mean anytime your brother likes one of your songs, it's going to be a massive hit? <laughs> I like to think so. <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't say no. Um, I do want to talk about that. So, uh... For anybody, if you're familiar, you should be because we play their music all the time. But you guys all went viral in some way. And I remember, Gail, I heard your song for the first time because Dixie D'Amelio posted yeah. it on one of her TikToks. Crazy. Um, and Mimi, I know, I think Charlie posted your a debut single, which was pretty wild. Like first, first single out there and it's blowing up. And obviously, Tate, you went uh, viral on YouTube. So here's my question about this, because I think as, you know, I'm just a TikTok scroller. I scroll through and I see these things and I laugh and I keep scrolling. Um, how was it 
to be the person on the receiving end of your video or your song, your music going massively viral and then getting the streams, the views, the listens, like all of that. Like, what was that like? Um, for me, at least, uh, one of my songs that like, you wrote me first was really interesting because I could not convince anyone that this was a good song. <laughs> like every single person that I tried to, you know, tell to like that I really wanted to release the song, like didn't really believe me. So I just really, really, really fight for it to get released. And I remember we released the song like literally less than a month later because no one wanted this song to come out. Um, and then you know, seeing people receive it so well on TikTok and you know, you know, see it like blow up really fast is is a really surreal feeling because you're like, okay, my gut was right all along. And I think that's like the part that, you know, has been really exciting is that with social media is like, we have full reign, we have full control. Um, which meaning is like, trust your instinct always, because I think that's the only thing that people are going to be able to connect to, which is cool. Yeah, what about you guys? And I also feel like you can, like Tate said, like you, if you know you really believe in this song, you tease it on TikTok, you push it. And you actually can kind of control your day one streams if you want to. Like, that's how crazy it can be. Like, if you really look into it and, like, and like use it and do your thing with it and be yourself on the app and, like, be able to connect. And you can just control it. And I think also, like, labels have had to get used to it. They've, got, they've had to learn this new way of, of it working. Um, I know that when I started the pandemic, I started doing videos with my parents um, with my song could be thou, so then that that's what kind of started it go like started it all, you know, going off, and um, then so then that was like I remember everyone was freaking out, like all the labels were going out to manager like how does this work? What you know what's actually going on? How do we get this to work for this person? How does this all go on? And it was very like I think for everyone it was just a freak moment of being like this is what this is the way the industry is now starting to work, and I think from the pandemic that's why you know. A lot of young kids can now go on TikTok, talented people, post a video of a song they want to release, and then that people automatically will see that. And it can go so viral, and then straight away they're going to be signing a deal. And that's crazy because before that, it was to, to be able to get seen and heard was just a completely different story to now. So I think being able to have that control and and you know, know where you want to direct your career in. It's just amazing. So to be able to do that in our generation now is just so cool. I don't know about YouTube, but I didn't believe it at first, especially when it first like started happening and people started getting <coughs> audio and it started getting streams. Like for me personally, ABC was out for a couple of months before anything really started happening to get it to where the level was. Like I had. 12,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, and those 12,000 monthly listeners were baddies. Like, I was like, let's go, you know? Like, I was hyped, and then a song, like, that was out for a year, got like 500,000 streams, and I was, I wrote that song when I was like 15, and I was 16, and I was just like, hell yeah! Like, I was like, this is awesome! And I was never like, I want more. Like, I knew that wasn't like the best thing in the whole entire world, but I was like, I was pretty like stoked and happy and grateful, and then, ABC at one point, like, I remember when it hit, like, 7 million streams, and I was like, okay, like, that's cool, like, and I wasn't necessarily being like, I want more, I was like, that's, that's so amazing, and then literally a month later, it had 107 million streams, and so in a month, it got 100 million streams, and I was like, oh my god, what is happening, and then I was literally like, is this real? Like, I don't, did I, did I die, and then, like, go into an alternate reality, like, what's going on, and then, I just, I guess I, I, I expected it to like wake up one day and everything was just going to disappear. And so I felt like I didn't always want to like acknowledge it or like really like see, because it's also like numbers. Like it's not, you can't always like see people's faces. So like you just think the numbers are just going to go away in one day and like they never existed and never happened. And then you're just going to be like, and you don't want to get excited about it because then you can get let down. And then at one point I was just like, this is everything I've ever wanted ever. And it'd be stupid of me to not just be like, that's cool. <laughs> like, or like, I'm happy about that. And yeah, I guess that's what it was like for me, just being like, I don't believe you, but I'm going to be happy for it. <laughs> and riding with it. Well, I do think um, it's also a testament to your vulnerability in your music, right? Because anybody can go viral for whatever reason. 
But what keeps you there, what keeps that momentum, that traction, that people wanting more is, you know, the, the lyrics and the connection and the relatability. And I really think all of you guys bring that. And so I think that's the makings of a very long career. So far, and I know we're kind of running short on time, but so far, what would you say is the dream come true moment for you where it's just like, oh, this was so cool, I got to do that um, in your first Not gonna lie, opening up for the both of you last night. Aww. Like, I'm not even lying, bro. Cause like, I, I literally sang, that was the biggest venue I've ever sang at. And I sang ABC, and people knew the lyrics. We and like, and also, like, you have such a beautiful fan base, especially because it's literally, cool. because <laughs> they're so great. And it's also, like, it's literally kids, like, our age. Yeah. And they're, like, it's literally, like, we're all equals, and we're all just, like, homies. And everybody's there to appreciate music. Like, there's times where you go to shows, and nobody's there to have a good time. They're just there to be, like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, like, everybody's so... Hi, it is literally such a dream come true, and you both are like so talented, and there's not really every day on where you get to see three young women right. open like that. Just that just doesn't happen, especially people like who write their own songs, and like you both are incredible performers, and like that was literally such a dream, and it was so hype, and like yeah, that was oh, so great. Aww. You are such a queen, and you know, I want to say about these ladies, very humble, down to earth people, and I think. That's amazing. Keep coming going. from the UK. <laughs> <laughs> you feel it, babe. Like, tell me how humble I am. Yeah, like coming from the UK as well, and like coming into this world and like and meeting these girls, like it's just so amazing, and I just love it. I've right now I'm spinning about it. It's so great. <laughs> <laughs> Bring on the tour. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm so excited. You guys are opening. You guys are the best ever. I like literally peek over the curtain there right now. Like, this is so cool. Um. <laughs> But I would say kind of like, you know, Gail, like my first moment that was kind of crazy was I hadn't performed in two years. Like I hadn't even really performed singing wise. And You Broke Me First came out in the pandemic. And I was literally like stuck in my dad's basement for like forever doing schoolwork and yeah. <laughs> being miserable. Um, and I didn't know that I didn't like I didn't believe anything. I didn't realize that it was going on the radio. I didn't realize that it was blowing up because I couldn't really leave my house. And then the first time that I actually saw it was at Lollapalooza, um, which was like, you know, 20,000 people. And I didn't even realize what the festival was. And I feel like I walked out on stage and I like almost started crying because I was like, this is wild. Like I didn't, I didn't even know that there were real faces and real people listening to my music. And I think that was one of my like, whoa moments where I was like, this is real life right now. I feel like a... Rockstar. <laughs> <laughs> and I also feel like when things do well on social media or like even the radio, I'm like it's on the radio, but in my car. That's it. Only only my right. car. Or like, yeah, it's only on my phone where people can like hear my song. Like, no, it's just it's just like for me. Totally. Well, I hate to break it to you, but I was literally just listening to your EP so I can hear it. <laughs> they can all hear it. Um, congratulations, Tate, on your single Chaotic is out so now. Good. So good. Um, Mimi, you have a single out as well. And you guys, you have to go see them tonight at TLA. Buy them a cheesesteak. Um, <laughs> please. I'm going to have a cheesesteak for sure. Please. <laughs> yeah, she looks, what's it called? Whiz Wit? Whiz Wit? Yeah. Oh, That's what it, yeah, it's going to be cool about it. I don't know. Um, but thank you guys so much for taking the time and so many good things coming your way. So we appreciate it. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you.